Hello, everybody. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Maureen O'Connor from Quilters Heaven in Northbrook, Illinois, and I am the Opinionated Quilter. Today's episode, number 63, is this terrific stash scrap quilt behind me, alternating squares. I've got two versions to show you and a third on its way. But before we get to that, let's get to my opinion. I saw a great video this week that shows you how to use your orphan blocks, your leftover pieces, um, sewing from the parts department, as Pat Sloan would say, and it's called Cutoffs and Orphan Unit Scrap Quilt Tutorial from Carol Thielen. While I don't agree with everything in the construction of her quilt, I love the way it came out. It has a great use for those pieces that I showed you last week where you had leftover two and a half inch pieces from uh, jelly rolls where you didn't use the whole thing. And I said, why not just make some four patches? These four patches would go perfectly in this quilt. We'll have a link in the description. I urge you to watch it if you have a pile of orphans and leftover pieces. Now, let's get to today's episode. This quilt you saw in episode 33, it didn't have a name. One of the comments I got was from a viewer who said, somebody asked me what the pattern was. And I said, the Opinionated Quilter, episode 33, didn't seem to do it justice. Well, now it has a name. It's called Alternating Squares. And I did add a border. So this quilt became a little bit bigger than it was before. Uh, but this was really stash where I was making about four of the blocks at a time, and I was alternating between the two versions of the blocks with the same fabric. I showed you the bags of scraps that I've been getting, and I decided to make this again with one of those bags. This is what I came up with. I did purple and pink. The bag was all purples and pinks and white. Um, and we're in the first version, I cut black from the store. It wasn't a scrap. I was trying to use all the scraps of white in the bag. So all my white on whites are different. They are the same within the block, but they're different from block to block. And what I decided to do on this one, instead of making both versions in pink and both versions in purple, I stick, stuck with all one version pink and all one version purple to make it easier to put together. Let's look at the whiteboard and show how these blocks are made up. The blocks finish to six and a half, so they're raw edge to raw edge seven. And all of the prints, what I call the prints, are the purple and pink in the second version and all the geometrics in the first version. The accent uh, fabric is black and white over here. So block one has a print cut two inch square, so it would finish to one and a half. The accent fabric is cut one and a half, so it finishes to one. And again, another two inch print fabric. And then the block two starts with the accents in the center also a two inch square finishing to one and a half. One and, excuse me, two inches to finish to one and a half of the print, and then one and a half inch cut to finish to one of the accent. So all the prints are cut two, and the accent is all cut one and a half to finish to one except for this center square. So now let's swap out the whiteboard and I'll show you how we piece them. I've written up the pattern for you. It is on my website. It has all the cutting directions and we'll provide a link below. Here is block one. Starts with the print square in the center, has a round of the accent fabric and then a round of the print fabric. So here is the center square. You sew the accent on either side, press, add the, the uh, accent fabric top and bottom and then do it again with the print. 
Same with block two, except for you start with the center square of the accent fabric, one round of the print and a last round of the accent fabric. But if you've watched my channel ever before, you know that's not how I'm going to piece it. I like to strip piece. If you remember my log cabin quilt that I did some time ago, this is how I like to do it. So how would I do this one? I would take the center square fabric, take a strip and sew a accent fabric to either side of it. Then this becomes a two inch unit. Cut across, I would get four from this piece. Then I would take this piece that's now just a two inch piece and I would sew it onto the accent fabric, right sides together and just sew each piece down just like I'm showing here. So at this point, this is a, a number two block that I started with a center square of the accent fabric with print fabric on either side, cut them apart into two inch segments and took a strip of the print and just lay them down. So as you go, leaving a little bit of space in between so you can cut them apart, cut them apart, press. And then I do the same thing with the next strip. Just lay them all down, sew all the way down, cut them apart, press. So now you would end up with a unit like this. So now this needs the print, excuse me, the accent fabric around it. So these would be trimmed to square. And once they're trimmed to the correct size, I just take them again, same thing that I do. Just lay it down, leave a little space, next one, space, next one, cut them apart. I find it a much more efficient way of piecing. However, if I've learned anything from this channel and owning this store, everybody likes to do something different. Whatever works for you is great. So if you have a pile of leftover strips, maybe from jelly rolls, just from leftover cutting from other fabrics, if they go together, this will work. Whether it's a, a stash like this one or really scrappy like this one, they're very fun to make. They're fast, they're easy, there's not matching points. So it makes a, a charity quilt very quickly. So I hope you can find a use for this for your, for your stash or scraps. And that's it for today. So until next Monday, happy sewing.